Butler Bulldogs have knocked off two Power 5 opponents for the first time in nearly 20 years. Meanwhile, the Ball State Cardinals off to their best start since 2006. The Indiana teams clash inside Worthen Arena this afternoon. And with that, we welcome you courtside here in Muncie with Los Angeles Sparks assistant Amber Stocks. Joel Godek, glad to have you along with us. This is a pretty good matchup. Two teams that get a pretty good gauge heading into conference play. Both teams will have a great opportunity to see how they'll fare and kind of get a good look at where their teams are and what they need to improve on as Butler heads into Big East play, picks eighth overall in the Big East, and as Ball State heads into MAC play, picks second in the MAC. Cardinals have been led this year by Natalie Fontaine, preseason Mid-American Conference Player of the Year. She has certainly lived up to that billing. You look at where she stands right now in the scoring ranks, just 10 points away from fourth all time, and she's got a pretty good shot at that number one slot. Natalie is a great scorer, and she's got the potential to really inch her way up to that number one spot. If she can average 19 points per game, which we all know she's capable of, she's on point right now. And again, she's a high volume scorer. She could have a great night any given night. Needs to average 19, currently is averaging 19. She had 29 on Thursday against Ohio Valley. But as we look at our impact players for today, it's one thing that's not really in Natalie Fontaine's arsenal. It's shooting the three. We're going to have a lot of fun from behind the arc today. It's going to be a great game from the three-point line tonight, starting with Blair Langloy from Butler. The senior is averaging 12 points per game and shooting 30.9% from the three-point line. She has more three-point attempts than any other player taking the court tonight. Against Wright State, she went six for 12 from three-point line alone, hit five threes in the first half. We talk about a high volume score. She has a career high of 32 points. She scored nine threes against Georgetown last year. That was a Butler school record. Pretty cool statistic, but for Jill Morrison on the Ball State side, more of a challenge. Jill Morrison is going to definitely be challenged. Where Blair Langloy has more three-point attempts, Jill Morrison has more three-point makes, shooting an impressive 44.4% from the three-point line. Jill is also averaging four rebounds, and she's very effective in all areas of the court. Against UMass, she went five for eight from the three-point line. Everybody loves a shooter. The three-point line is the sexiest part of the basketball game. But what are the other keys if you're going to come out victorious today? For Butler, they've got to hit free throws. Butler right now is shooting more free throws than their opponents. And Ball State is actually giving up more free throws than their opponents. So this right here is an area where Butler could have the edge. Butler also needs to defend the post. They are clearly going to have their hands full with Natalie Fontaine. They need to lock down and make sure that they defend her inside. Ball State has got to have balanced scoring. They cannot rely just on Morrison and Fontaine, but Monaco, Murder, and maybe even Carmen Grande need to step up their scoring all around. Pressure defense. Ball State has got to pressure. We're going to see a variety of offensive looks and some even spread offense from Butler. Ball State needs to keep the pressure on and even extend it and pick up full court. You talk about the difference in what Butler does offensively in this game. You take a look at that starting lineup. For Kurt Godlewski, it's very much a shooter's lineup. They run a five-out system. You don't see that a whole lot. They run a five-out system, and they're going to be playing a lot of small ball, per se. Even with their bigs, they their bigs will shoot the three-point ball as well. It's only seven deep Butler's bench, so that five-some will be joined by Alexa Bailey and Tori Schickel, a couple of freshmen. That's all you're going to see out of the Butler Bulldogs today. Belle Obert is the senior starting forward at the bottom of that list. We'll talk a lot about her today. She is a Butler volleyball player and basketball player as well. Ball State's lineup has become settled very much throughout the course of the season. Carmen Grande is the Spaniard, the starting point guard, who is the leading point guard in the country when it comes to dishing out assists. Carmen Grande's ability to handle the ball, see the court, and hit the right player at the right time, especially for a freshman, is extremely impressive. She joins Fontaine, Bennett, and Morrison, that trio of upperclassmen. Mariah Monaco has made huge strides from freshman year to her sophomore season. And the 4-2 and two record for Ball State, as good as this program has been, tough to believe that's the best start since 2006 for the Cardinals. There is Kurt Golevsky, former high school coach at Bedford North Morris, just south of Bloomington, Indiana. Very successful. Joined Butler two years ago, first as an assistant coach, then as the head coach, and went with last year and this year combined, 18 and 19. 
jumping into the Big East in his first year as well, went 10-8 in conference, so played with the Giants right away. Brady Sally on the other side for the Cardinals has done miracles since inheriting a team that had won 18 games its prior two seasons. Brady Sally has played in three consecutive NITs here in Muncie. Coach Sally has done a great job transforming this Ball State program and really leading them not only just to postseason, but in improving the overall culture of Ball State women's basketball. Tap back is won by the Cardinals. Our officiating crew today, Zachary Klein, Carol Comancia, Erica Hermain, Camarano. Right to Morrison here for the Cardinals. Very adept from behind the arc. So is Monaco, who just gave it up and gets it back. Ten to shoot into Fontaine for the first time. And the mid-range jumper. The one thing that teams would love to force her to do is shoot it. If she can knock that down, it makes it a better day. Ball State got the ball right where they wanted. They got it to Fontaine on the block. I'm surprised Butler did not send a double at her. But they're going to challenge and see if Fontaine can hit that shot. Shooting right away. It's Blair Langroy. 31% on the season, but not shy. She's going to put it up at first glance. She, she wasted no time finding the three-point line, and her teammates wasted no time getting her the ball. Cardinals with an air ball. That from Grande. Butler out and running once more. One thing we've seen already, two possessions in. Ball State makes, it can set up the press. If it doesn't, that alleviates a little bit of the pressure on Butler. Here's Brittany Ward, the freshman from Indianapolis. And a good pressure defense from behind by Renee Bennett. Cardinals off and running themselves. Grande to the rack. That is not her strength. And I guess one thing you'd like to see the freshman do is pull that back out maybe. You know, she's, I think, maybe trying to get her way to the free throw line. But like you said, not her strength. At this point in the game, move the ball around and try to get some good offense. Ward with the foot on the line, too. And Grande, again, the rebound. She's been so awesome dishing it out, averaging more than six a game. And we've got a foul on the floor. But shooting under 30% from the floor, 11% from three. So that's the one area you'd like to see her improve her game. And that's where you're a freshman. There's going to be things you do great. There's going to be things you need to work on. Uh, but the great part and the upside is what has her in the starting lineup. Right, and that is her ability to see the court, her the way she can push tempo, yet pull it back and get some pace for the Ball State offense. There's the steal for Obert. Butler running again, and the three. Just off the mark, that's Sydney Buck. Offensive rebound keeps it alive. Buck will shoot, Langloy will shoot. Those are the two people to put hats on behind the arc. They've got to find Buck, they've got to found, find Langloy, and then Bailey isn't too far behind them. Natalie Fontaine and Renee Bennett got to find their post players as well from the three-point line. This is Langloy. Fontaine's got her with room to shoot. Hand down, man down, just too much cushion. You've got to be on her. She is looking to shoot the ball at all times. Like we said before, she has more three-point attempts than any other player in the gym today. She has attempted 10 three times this year. Did it against South Florida, Central Florida, and Wright State. Inside touch, Bennett. And the step back for the 6-5 center. You'll live with that if you're Kurt Godlevsky. Twice in a row, Butler has Ball State pushed off of the block, and they've had to settle for that jump shot. And the Cardinals pressure. Ward right into it, and they got her for a charge. Credit to Bennett stepping right in front. This is the area of the game that I would really am in curious to see how Renee Bennett is going to respond today. She's going to have to play a little bit of perimeter defense, per se, with the way that Butler moves the ball around and attacks from the outside, not just guarding the block. Grande just ran around the press. The lob broken up, though. Again, that's what she brings to the table, that speed, that burst. Ball State averaging 78 points per game. 39th in the country in offense. Now we've got a third foul called on Butler. This one is on Alexa Bailey, the freshman. She is the daughter of 
The word legend gets thrown around a lot, but legend in the state of Indiana, Damon Bailey, who's on the bench for Butler today. Morrison shows off the range, but short. And the rebound, Langlois. Great hustle by Carmen Grande to come over there and tip that out of bounds. She always has her hands up and active, and she's always looking to make a play on the ball. Let's see how Butler does in a half-court set. I got you. First time they've had to do that today as the pace of the game settles down. Another three, and another make. Langloy. She has all nine of Butler's points. Ball State has got to figure out something on defense, but chasing Langloy around all these stagger screens and baseline screens is not clearly going to work for them tonight. Grande the scoop, too hard off the glass. And the rebound to the freshman, Tori Schickel. We have now seen all seven of Butler's players available. Bulldogs only have ten on the roster. Three of them are hurt. Taylor Buford, Nicole Orr, and Emily Shabel. Foot, lower body, and head injuries, respectively. Another three. Finally, Langloy misses, and Grande will chase the rebound. She started three for three. Bounce passes through. And Butler will go back to the bench again. Ward and Weaver come back for the Bulldogs in blue. They're going to say that went off of Ball State as well. So Bennett just cleaned through it out of bounds. And the Cardinals will set the press up. This is an area right here on these dead ball situations when Ball State can set up their press. They can really cause some havoc and some disruption to the Butler flow. You know, keep the pressure on, change up their defenses, something that Ball State has done so well so far this year. Although, I'll be honest, Butler seems to have handled the press pretty well. Almost unfazed. And a travel. So Weaver coughs it up. Second giveaway for Butler. That was a turnover by Butler. You know, Ball State really still can put the pressure on. Butler, that was an unforced error. Ball State did not create that turnover with their defense. They're going to need to do something to really throw a wrench in Butler's offense. Monaco off the screen. Missed short. Good box out for the rebound. Schickel. And Alexa Bailey runs the offense. Point guard is not a shooter for them. She's OK with that. Says that's not her role. And on cue, she bounces it down low, and Schickel finishes around the bucket. Great ball movement by Butler, moving the ball around, attacking off of the dribble, forcing Ball State into rotation, and finding an open player right under the basket. That's the first bucket not scored by Langloy for the Bulldogs. Monaco underneath. Right, Talked about the vision from Grande. Gets the helper. That's great vision and great strength by Monaco to take the contact and finish hard inside. Butler just about doubling up the Cardinals and another three, Langloy missed it. Fontaine the rebound, but still Brady Sally can't be happy she got that open. If there's one player for Butler that you need to find right away, it is clearly Langloy. Inside Bennett and Fontaine again threw it out of bounds. Or I should say the Cardinals. First time it was Bennett going to Fontaine. This time Fontaine going to Bennett. Langlois got the Cardinals back on their heels. Nine of Butler's 11.
Blair Langloy, we talked about her off the top, has nine of Butler's 11 points, Amber. She's three for five from three. The rest of the team is one of four. You know, we see right there that possession. Butler ran a simple ball screen for her, and then this possession, a simple sagger screen. They're not doing anything overly complicated. Ball State has got to have a strategy. What is their game plan on ball screens when Langlois coming off? What is their game plan when Langlois coming off of a stagger screen? Well, Kurt Godlevsky gives Brady Sally the game plan right now, puts her on the bench in the meantime. So she gets a quick breather, and it gives the Cardinals' defense a break momentarily. Butler drives right in. That's Weaver coughing it up. Bulldogs still in possession, though. And Ober gets fouled. Kaylin Jose picking up the Cardinals first. It's her first as well, just checking in for the home team. And Obert Two goes shots. to the line where she hits at 75%. Butler's done a great job behind the three-point line, and it's good to see them attacking the basket now. Two times that possession, they got the ball on the floor and attacked the basket, getting to the free throw line. Obert, a fantastic story. Goes two for two on that trip. Four-year volleyball player. Walked into Kurt Godlevsky's office last year and said, hey, I played basketball in high school. I'd like to give it a try. I haven't touched a ball in four years. He said, well, give it a whirl. And recalling it earlier today said, uh, Blair Obert said, I don't know if I'm going to be any good, but we'll give this a try. I think it's worked out. It definitely has worked out. <laughs> She's adding so much to the Butler team. And, you know, you look at her physique. She is an elite level athlete able to play two sports at the Division I level in the Big East. Schickel misses the layup. And the rebound down to Shelby Murder. Never practiced with the team last year before joining. Volleyball season ended. She walked on a bus to the airport to go to Hawaii with the team. First time she met the teammates. Met her coaches for the most part. Hi, hello. Here's Murder for three. Olbert gives up the rebound to Fontaine, who gets fouled. Natalie Fontaine's going to the line for Ball State with the Cardinals down five. That was a great second well, effort by Natalie Fontaine on this rebound, putting the ball on the floor, going up, drawing the contact. Ball State has got to make sure that they pound the boards and not just Fontaine. Murder needs to get in there. Jose needs to get in there. And obviously Bennett, get inside and try to get second chance points. Fontaine just out jumped an outside hitter at the Division I level, by the way. olbert has got some hops. Natalie, 28 of 29 at the line. She is still missed just once. Ball State back within three as Langloy continues to sit on the bench. Buck is also a shooter. You've got to watch her, even from out there. Buck again. Shot clock inside 10. Obert is open. And the air ball. Jose saves it out of bounds. Cardinals without numbers. I like the ball movement on both sides today. That stays with Ball State. Both teams are doing a great job of moving the ball around. In that possession, Natalie Fontaine saw the open lane. She thought, maybe I'll take this off the dribble. It didn't pan out well, they, although they are getting the ball back. But that's a good look for her. Put the ball on the floor. Don't be afraid to put it on and take it to the rack. Morrison left open, missed it. Fontaine the board. Another offensive rebound, but Ober blocks it. That was the Cardinals' third offensive rebound, and it leads to a three for Buck. Butler's defense is creating offense. Butler leads the Big East in blocked shots. And again, behind the efforts of Obert, get, that puts them down in position to hit those quick transition threes. Hand check on Alexa Bailey. That is her second. And the fifth means it'll be a two-shot foul. Obert, by the way, you're talking about blocks. Triple-double this year. Was against TCU of all teams, who played in the postseason last well, season. Did it points, rebounds, and blocks. She had eight rebounds and five blocks to secure the triple-double in the fourth quarter of that game. Second 
points, rebounds, blocks, triple-double in Big East Conference history, and not just this incarnation of the Big East, but the old incarnation of the Big East. So impressive standing in its own right. That's what you're dealing with on the inside. Very impressive. And Renee Bennett and Natalie Fontaine, they're going to go up against such a phenomenal standout defender. They need to use all of the tools in their arsenal to score against Beth Over. Ward double teamed inside. They go back for Weaver. Then she stepped out of bounds. Ball State back within four here after the free throws. Ball State shooting just 30%. Butler at 38. So as much as shots were falling early, they have stopped. Although Butler as a whole isn't really shooting it that well. Langlois is three of five. The rest of the team is two of eight. Fontaine, double team, triple team. Saw Langlois come down from the top there. You know, with Jose on the court, Ball State puts themselves in position to, for Fontaine to be doubled easily. Monaco with the shot clock winding down, and Ward gallops in for the rebound. One thing you have to be wary of sometimes, and it goes on both sides. Jose is not a huge scoring threat. Bailey is not a huge scoring threat for Butler. Is, do you kind of have the guts to leave somebody undefended? Well, right now, Butler showed us that they do have the guts to do that. They left and went and doubled Fontaine, but that is the right call defensively. Ward tried to keep it in. It goes out anyway. And Ball State takes over eight seconds left here in the first quarter. And these are the end game scenarios that you get more of now in the women's game with the quarters instead of the halves. So we'll see what Brady Sally has in place for his players. Final five seconds in the first quarter. It's Grande. And the rebound to Butler as the final seconds tick off. So Langloy hits three early triples and it leads Butler to a four point first quarter lead. Um...
Blair Langlois, three early threes have Butler out in front by four after the first quarter. Natalie Fontaine for the Cardinals has gotten it done on that side. Six points for her in the first quarter. She needs five more to move into fourth place all time in Ball State's career scoring ranks. She did have a handful of rebounds though, Amber in the first quarter, four of them total. So she's now eighth all time in Ball State rebounding. 712, she passed Portia Green today. Right now, she's doing a great job on both ends of the court, scoring and rebounding. And you mentioned Butler did a good job of pushing her off the block, and she still turned around and hit that baseline, Jay. It's gonna be a Butler basketball here to start quarter number two. Bulldogs five of 13 shooting. They'll maintain possession. Three of five is Langloy. She started at three of three. So the percentage at 38.5% from the floor looks okay, but when you look deeper into it, still looking for some answers against Ball State's defense. Here's Buck, they run her off the line. And Langloy, good job running her off the line. Shot clock's inside of 10. Back to Langloy. She's missed three in a row. And the rebound to Monaco. You've got to run at your three-point shooters, quote unquote, run them off the line. Run them off the line. That's great ball movement by Butler. They force Ball State into a couple of switches that possession, which I don't think is what Coach Salee wanted coming out of that timeout. Monaco almost open. Shoots it anyway. Missed just short. Had some daylight off the screen. Maybe should have pulled the trigger when she first got gun shy. Sometimes it's better to just square up, take your time, and take the first shot. Here's Langloy again. Buck and Langloy just playing tag. And a moving screen called on Ward. Brittany Ward, the freshman, is out there and she takes up a lot of space. She's really setting a lot of screens each possession for Butler. I'm surprised that this is the first time she's been called for that moving screen, but that's her job. She's got to nail the defense and force them into rotation. Where Butler does have to be careful is that's now two players with two fouls. Monaco missing long and here comes Langloy. They only have seven players. So you can't really get into foul trouble because you don't have any options. Grande with the steal. Three on one, Ball State. Morrison. That was good defense by Ward, although it stays with Ball State. And Morrison again. Boy, she'd rather do that. It's as if Jill Morrison knew that she needed to get the ball back in her hand. She was not content with having her shot blocked in transition. 164 career three-pointers for Jill Morrison. Ward cannot match her. Cardinals running. Big time tempo lift. Grande now. A little long. And the rebound to Sydney Buck. Great job by Ball State to push it that possession. You know, Jose's out there for her defense, but her ability to rebound the ball and start the transition break is good for Ball State. Hand off Langloy. Three to shoot, Langloy. She's now missed her last Three from behind the arc. You can sense Butler's kind of prodding to try to get shots for Buck and Langley. They are, and they're doing a good job of it, moving the ball around against the changing defenses of Ball State. I mean, rightfully so. It's not like that was a bad, a bad thing. You can just see that's kind of where the offense is going. Two to shoot, and Grande again comes up just short. Butler's going to take that. Carmen Grande is 0 for 6. And if they can force her to shoot instead of Bennett or Monaco or Morrison or Fontaine, Kurt Godlewski is going to sleep well tonight. That's good scouting and good game strategy by Butler. They know that Grande struggles a little bit, particularly off of the dribble. So she's gotten two or three shots up there in the top of the key range off of the dribble. None of them have been on point. I think they're going to keep letting her get those shots. It's not for lack of trying. 
if anybody shoots on this team more than Carmen Grande, they're lying to you. She practices, and she practices her craft very diligently. Olbert with the bank shot. Bill Olbert. When she can't get in the arena to shoot, Carmen Grande is known to be at the rec center here on campus. You got pickup going on in the court next to you. You got the varsity point guard, 21st in the nation in assists, shooting on the court over there. Morrison a little bit long. Butler now plus two rebounding. Off the curl, Langloy with a two-point bucket. This is that spread offense we were talking about earlier, Joel. Butler will do a good job of running that motion, creating space by cutting and spreading the court. Fontaine trying to drive on Ober. Pretty good wall-up defense. That's going to stay with Ball State. Credit Obert going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Swedish wonder. Right now, Butler's lockdown defense inside is very impressive. Their hands are straight up. You mentioned they can't get into foul trouble. Right there, Obert did a great job. She moved her feet. She was in position and then wasn't tempted to reach in and try to pick up a silly foul by blocking at the last second. Monaco off the baseline out of bounds is short. Butler doing a really good job here trying to limit Ball State one and out. Well, and Ball State is not doing a good job of moving the ball, putting it on the floor, and trying to get action going to the rim. Weaver finds Obert for three. Got Fontaine to run at her. And a foul off ball is on Monaco. Ball State foul. Now that Butler is spreading the court, we may be have. Ball State may put themselves in position to pick up more of these ticky-tack type of hand check fouls because they've got to sprint out and contain the ball on the dribble. Stand corrected, they got Fontaine for that foul. Her first, Ball State's first, and Butler comes out of the car wreck with the basketball. Morrison really picking up the pressure defense. Cardinals live for deflections. They average 20 turnovers against a game. But Buck finds another three. Again, Ball State has two things in mind. They need to guard Langloy and guard Buck from the three-point line. Butler is 5 of 12 from behind the arc. Has not trailed by more than two. Has led by as many as eight. That's where we stand. Fontaine. And a block on Ober. That's now her second, so three Butler Bulldogs with two fouls here in the first half. Can only do so much to hide them when the bench is seven deep. Butler leads by eight, though. It has a cushion midway through the second quarter.
Okay. Take a look at the Butler Bulldogs, four and three. They come in with three big time wins, TCU, Clemson, UCF. Chattanooga even is a NCAA tournament team from a year ago. So the schedule for this Butler team has been just short of ridiculous. They're in a stretch where they will take on five teams consecutively that played in the postseason last year. And baseline out of bounds, Fontaine goes one and out for Ball State. They look like they're hardened from that schedule. They are doing a great job with their scheduling, getting themselves ready in position to challenge the Big East, challenge DePaul and the front runners, and then put themselves in position to get to postseason play as well. Butler is the growing program in all of that. I mean, you look at who's at the top of the Big East this year, preseason. There's Langloy again. And Grande comes out of there. Doug Bruno at DePaul has been good for a long time. Harry Peretta invented the offense we're watching for Butler today at Villanova. So you're trying to compete with that, and Kirk Kudlewski's done a really good job trying to build something in a short amount of time. And not only is he doing a good job on the court, but they're doing a great job in recruiting as well. You look at their freshmen coming in. Impact freshmen making a difference right away. Morrison gets a bucket out of the mosh pit. Got a smashing pumpkins concert break out on the right wing. Ball State winds up with two points. Ball State one for ten right now from the three-point line. Clearly, it was a point of emphasis coming out of the timeout to get to the basket. Langloy bombs away. She hit her first three. Now, though, stands just three of seven, having missed four consecutive. Freddie Frazier off the Ball State bench. Again, Frazier known for her defense, but coming in, putting the ball on the floor, and getting to the basket, forcing Butler to have to call a timeout. Now, this is the type of game that we were expecting from the beginning. Ball State attacking, putting pressure on the Butler defense to defend inside. And this is what Ball State needs from somebody like Franny Frazier. Bench production, somebody other than Fontaine Morrison Bennett rising to the occasion. Definitely balanced scoring all around. Take advantage of maybe a weaker defender or a hole in the Butler defense and take advantage of that and go shoot the easy shot, the layup. Freddie Frazier came in averaging just five points per game. Was silent the first couple of games this year. Ball State had four points off the bench in its opening loss to Charlotte. But since then, you've started to see your Freddie Frazier's and your Shelby Murders play better. Frazier remains in, so does Murder for the Cardinals. And Morrison pokes it away from Sidney Buck. Three times on that right wing, when Butler's tried to enter the ball in to start the possession, they've made fumbles over in that right wing area. Great job by Ball State of having that scouted well. Seventh turnover for Butler, last in the Big East in turnover margin. Morrison, boy, thought about it. Fantastic ball movement, Grande to Morrison. Missed it from South Bend. And nearly an O-board for Frazier. Butler able to beat the press. Here's Weaver. Beat a press down the floor. Makes an easy bucket. Ball State had two defenders back, but it just wasn't enough. Butler did a great job. Little shot fake hesitation there by Weaver. Straight to the basket. Schickel did not give Fontaine room to land. That's her first, team's third. Not a whole lot Jill Morrison could do there. Well, you know, she's got to anticipate that ball is going to end up in the hands of Weaver. Weaver was the only Butler offensive player back who was unguarded. She needs to anticipate that just a little bit earlier. Ball State within six, has led by only two. Fontaine got mauled. And now the foul called. Well, she got mugged and then she got tapped. But all's well that 
ends well. That's on Tori Schickel. That is now her second. So Butler has four players with two fouls, and when you have a bench of seven, you have to play at least two of them. So you got to watch what you do here foul-wise. Butler's changing up their defenses. They started in man. We clearly see they're in zone now. They're trying to get their players in better position to not pick up fouls. But if Ball State keeps attacking, that strategy may not work. Shuckle got lucky there, tried to save it under her own bucket. Stepped out of bounds. Baseline out of bounds with a fresh 30. Fontaine missed left. The jump shot seems to be going cold for every Ball State Cardinal. Somebody's got to find a hot hand and start hitting shots from the outside. 23%. One of 11 from three, and Grande's called for her first. Ball State foul number three, Carly Grande, her first. That's the third on Ball State here in the second quarter. Of course, with the rule changes in women's college basketball, your fouls now resetting at the quarters. No more one and one bonus. You just shoot two at five. Langloy left wide open off the inbounds play, but again missing. Once more, she started three for three. She's now three of eight. How about the fact that she's got eight attempts from three before halftime? You know, you don't know if that's a credit to the Butler offense or a question mark in Ball State's defense. Fontaine missing the bunny. A little bit of both. The truth will probably <laughs> lie somewhere in the yeah. middle. Here's the cut. Buck rejected. Shelby murdered. Five second difference. Game clock, shot clock. Murder in the middle of the zone and threw it right to Schickel. The shot clock is off. Good attack there. Just murder threw it behind without looking. That was a great attack. And these high-low passes or the forward-to-forward -forward passes just aren't connecting right now for Ball State. Well, Weaver tried to do her best, Calvin Johnson, but it was out of bounds. And Brady Sally is going to call a timeout. So, A, he can advance the ball. B, he can have a play drawn up. And See, here's another end of game situation. You get two of these now. We've talked about it at the end of the first quarter. So 11.1 seconds. Uh, what say you, Amber Stocks? How are you drawing this up? Well, 11 seconds left. They've subbed Renee Bennett back into the game. So they've got two bigs in with Fontaine and Bennett. You know, right now, getting the ball on the floor with one of your perimeter players might be a good idea for Ball State. They've done a good job of attacking. They haven't connected in a lot of these high-low passing situations. And Butler is really condensing and clogging up the paint. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Butler decides to come out and not be in zone to pick up man-to-man. -man. Challenge Ball State a little bit man-to-man -man for 11 seconds. Butler has won six consecutive in this series. Ball State hasn't won on this floor since 2001. It will be down at the half, but by how much? Frazier gets to the rack. Fontaine the putback. And at the horn, Ball State is down four at the locker room. You like it? I like that. That was great execution by Ball State to get the ball on the floor, on the move. Catch Butler on their heels, and then nothing caps anything better off than an offensive rebound score. Butler leads for the vast majority of the first half. The three ball is what did it. Four points, the lead at the break.
Got to bump you that way. Okay. What did you point at? Oh, the shooting. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. fans, don't forget we are hosting Fan Jam at Worthen Arena today. Here it's a four-point Butler lead at the break, 25-21 over the Cardinals of Ball State. Butler again having won six consecutive in this series. And Amber Stocks, when we take a look at the statistics, why Butler is in front on its way to its seventh right now, just comes down to shooting. Ball State has not shot it well enough, under 30%, just one of 11 from three. Ball State is not shooting the ball well. They did decide at the end, though, to change that up a little bit, attack the basket off of the dribble. The other thing that stands out to me, Joel, is that there's only been six free throw attempts this entire game for both teams combined. Both teams got to get the ball on the floor, draw some fouls, and get to the free throw line. With the amount of fouls that have been called on Butler as well, there just haven't been a lot of shooting fouls. There haven't been shooting fouls, and they haven't been fouls that have been in the bonus situation again. Not the one-on-one -on -one bonus in years prior, but the double bonus at five free throws per quarter. If you're Butler at this point, keep doing what you're doing, or what has to change for them? If you're Butler at this point, keep doing what you're doing. Mix it up, man and zone. Clog the paint and force Ball State into those jump shots. If you're Ball State, how do you counteract that? How do you get it to Natalie Fontaine in better situations? Ball State has to move the ball. They're trying to get her the ball on the block off of the roll or off of the immediate post up. They need to turn the ball, reverse it a couple times, then get the ball inside. Set some cross screens, set some rip screens, get her the ball block to block off of reversals. It's Butler leading the Ball State Cardinals by four at the break here in Muncie. I taped my headset too tight, so like I can only rotate my head. Through. Butler's lead at the break is four here inside Worthen Arena, where the Ball State Cardinals have not beaten the Butler Bulldogs since 2001. I'm not going to lie, those are better moves than I got. Definitely whips her hair back and forth. 
Coming up next week for Ball State basketball, Pepperdine will be here Saturday. They'll take on the Ball State men's team, December 12th, Military and Public Safety Appreciation Day, but also Toys for Tots donations will be taken here at Worthen Arena at the Gate 1 lobby. They'll accept the donations starting Friday at well, uh, as well at the same location. So come on by Worthen Arena and give to Toys for Tots as we head toward the holiday season which Amber is always one of everybody's favorite times of the year for a variety of reasons and things like that part of it. Giving is so important for all of us, but especially the way that Ball State gives towards the community, the community of Muncie, the community of Indiana at large, East Central Indiana. Ball State does a great job of giving this holiday season. What are the toys for tots that are in right now? They're like a... Well, with my tots right now, Pokemon is always hot. That's, that's been, and yeah. P Pokemon, um, I know that Barbie's making a big push again this year, but any toys appreciated. Puzzles, coloring books, kids appreciate anything that comes from the heart. The more they change, the more they stay the same. I think Pokemon was in like 15 years ago too. I wouldn't know, but I just, I might have an inkling. All right, four points is the difference. Butler leading Ball State by four, 25-21 here at the Brandon Munson. Four points is the Butler lead at the break. Ball State shooting just 24% in the first half. Butler a 37% clip. They're led by Blair Langloy at this point. 11 points, six rebounds, three of eight from three, Amber Stocks. And those three early threes have really held up. It set the tone that carried on. They have set the tone and they forced Ball State to really respect Langloy and find her. That's giving Buck the opportunity to find open shots for Butler from the three-point line and even will give Obert the chance to light things up on the inside. Ball State is one of the leading assist teams in the country as well. We talked about putting different people in different positions to score. Take a look at Carmen Grande coming in. She only has two assists at this point. Well, it does have a couple of blocks as well. 37 assists this season. That leads the Mid-American Conference, 21st in the nation. Only freshman in the top 30. It's really been impressive. You look at what she did in Colorado against Florida and UMass. 17 assists, four turnovers. Luthia Fernandez has also made a huge impact. Cards will miss her, though, for the month. She broke her hand on Thursday night. You go overseas, you can find some different players, and that's what Brady Sally's been successful doing. Great job of coming 
into the Ball State program, Carmen Grande and Lucia Fernandez, and making an impact right away. The way that they handle the ball and see the court is very, very impressive. Again, Carmen Grande, the only freshman in the country in the top 21, in the top 30, excuse me, in assists. She distributes the ball very, very well. It's Grande and Fernandez add into that. Uh, Natalie Fontaine as well. The Cardinals have three foreigners, second most in the MAC on their roster. See if that'll hold up against Butler in the second half next. Butler leading Ball State, making everybody a little bit hungry here on a Sunday afternoon. She's Amber Stocks, Joel Gadette, glad to have you along with us. What's got to change here in half number two, Amber, as we take a look back at what happened in half number one? How do you get better looks, better shots, and uh, give yourself more opportunities to get to the bucket? Well, Ball State, we see they're going inside to Fontaine and trying to get the ball inside, not only to Fontaine, but they're going to need Bennett to step up as well. Butler did a great job of hitting from the three-point line. We see Lailoy found the hot hand, hot hand early in the half, and then Buck joined her from the three-point line as well. Langloy hit three threes in the first four minutes of today's game, has gone cold since then. Missing her last five. Did hit 11 points overall, though, and 11 more would give her a new season high. 21, her season high this year. Take a look at the statistics. Rebounding is even. Points in the paint, not even, but it, it's close. I mean, the draw right now is that Ball State just has not shot it as well. The shooting percentage right now is the thorn in the side for Ball State, 24%. And of their 33 shot attempts, 11 of them have been threes. Ball State can't keep coming down and one out of every three shots be a three-point shot, especially with the way that they're shooting from the free throw line. Again, Ball State is one of the best free throw teams in the country. They've got to find a way to get to the free throw line. And they're bigger. They have more size on the inside. You look at Bennett at 6'4", or rather at 6'5". You got Monaco. Shelby Murder is 6'3". That is height that Butler cannot match, so you have to be able to get inside and get A looks at the bucket and then those people to the line. Right, they've got to get those shooters to the free throw line. The other thing that stands out to me on the stats are the turnovers. Butler has eight turnovers. Ball State has four. Now, Butler usually 
would think that they can come into this game and force Ball State into a significantly higher number of turnovers. Ball State averages right now about 17 turnovers per game. So the fact that Ball State is taking care of the ball puts them in position to have more shots on goal. They've just got to make sure those shots are good high percentage shots. Ball State basketball to get things going. Fontaine, the inbounder, Grande caught it. And the clock never started. Those two played all 20 minutes in the first half for Ball State. And they've already played more here in the second half than the clock even indicates. So they'll look at bonus points. When you think about Butler having a roster of seven, well, Compare that to the fact that most teams only go seven or eight deep in any competitive game situation regardless. So Butler's not at a disadvantage just because they only have seven players dressed and ready to go. Cardinals go right inside of Natalie Fontaine. You think that was an emphasis in the locker room there for Brittany Sally? Clearly get the ball right inside to Fontaine. Ten points as well. She just tied Jonna Goff for fourth all-time at Ball State in career scoring. And Brittany Ward goes one and out for Butler. Here comes Grande, right down the pipe. Bennett the board. Cardinals attacking the bucket. We're tied. Ball State needs to get Renee Bennett involved. And if they're not going to get her involved with the offense, she did a great job of getting herself involved. Attack the basket and get those offensive rebounds. Butler's not going to get too out of control here as Ward heaves one but missed. Fight for the board, out of bounds. It's a Ball State basketball. Butler plays on stages very grand on a lot of occasions, has already gone down, played at Jose Fernandez's South Florida team. That's a top 25 opponent, beat Clemson, beat TCU. So even if Ball State puts some pressure on and makes a run, you'd expect Butler to stay composed. Butler will stay composed. They're experienced, they're mature. They know how to, like you said, handle the big stage and handle those tight moments. Tough defense on Grande out there by Buck. Morrison to Fontaine, just stripped. Obert stuck a hand in and ripped the ball out. Morrison had a great cut, but wasn't exactly sure about what she wanted to do with that ball when she caught it in the lane off of that cut. Ward. The drive, and she'll probably go to the line. Yep, they'll say in the act of shooting. So Brittany Ward gets to the free throw line where she is only a 57% shooter. It's interesting for Kurt Godlewski. It seems like his game plan has also been to go closer to the bucket, not shoot as many threes as quickly, and get it to Brittany Ward. You know, I wonder if they're attacking Renee Bennett strategically because that's twice that they have found Ward at the top of the key. So Butler continuing to move the ball around. They've got shooters in Langlois, they've got shooters in Buck, but they've got Brittany Ward and they've got Tori Schickel as well who can put the ball on the floor and get to the rim. Two substantially bigger players than the other guards for Butler. Ward goes 0 for 2 and then Carmen Grande lost the ball, but it goes out on Butler. Ward can do it, too. She came in as the preseason freshman of the year in the Big East from down in Indianapolis at Pike High School. Just shy of 1,500 points and exactly 1,000 rebounds for her high school career. Brandy Frazier off the bench finds Bennett. Missed point blank, but Fontaine and the putback. Natalie Fontaine, eighth rebound, 11th and 12 points. Right now, Ball State is dominating the offensive rebounds. They have nine offensive rebounds in this game. Butler's got to box them out and keep them off the glass. Ward fading away. Obert, the slap back. And a second chance on the offensive rebound for Butler. Now six consecutive misses from deep for Langloy. She got it back. Takes Grande, but missed it. Helter Skelter here in the early going. Second half. Morrison. Ball State's largest lead is five. 
Well, when Carmen Grande wanted to slow down the tempo, Natalie Fontaine said no, not quite yet. She pushed the ball down, found the shooter, spotted up in transition. Great job by Morrison. Three to answer. No. That one from Buck. Grande full head of steam and a foul on the floor. What a momentum shift. That three-point shot and Ball State putting the ball on the floor and getting to the basket. They've clearly got the momentum here. They need to keep it going, keep attacking and driving, finding that open shooter deep range, Jim Morrison. Let that thing fly from Bloomington. Kind of expect that. Morrison's the kind of person that would advocate for the, the uh, implementation of a four-point line. Be totally fine with it. Here's Grande. Rebounded weak side and lost. Freddie Frazier goes to the floor and got the timeout. Wow, impressive second effort hustle by Frazier to dive on the floor. You know, just when you think the ball's going out of bounds, Stick with it. She did a great job of saving that. And again, this we talked earlier about players not being in for offense. She's in for her hustle. Brady Sally burns his second. This team by five. She's getting ready to go over at Carmen Grande. <laughs> Which means she's now got to guard two people. Jill Morrison, big three-pointer, puts the Cardinals up. Five points the lead. Better transition defense from Butler there. You know, Butler did a good job of getting back and talking. However, as they were rotating out to guard Carmen Grande, they put themselves in position to have one person guard Fontaine and Morrison. That's just not going to work. Yeah, if I'm going to pick two people to guard with one person, probably not going that route. It's a hard challenge. Back to Fontaine. And the Cardinals coming out of the timeout diagram it beautifully. Franny Frazier knows her role. The hustle play and then the comeback out of the timeout with the assist to Natalie Fontaine. Points out of timeouts. Credit Brady Sally. Ball stayed up seven. It led by only two in the first half, and that was early. 
A three to answer is short, and Butler has gone cold, although it will maintain possession. Langlois started three of three from deep, and Butler as a team since then is two of 13. Butler has gone cold, and I admire them for continuing to go back to the three-point shot, but that baseline three is such a hard shot to hit. Schickel fouled on the way up. And why when you can do that? Ward and Schickel and Obert on the inside. You know, we haven't talked much about Schickel tonight. She comes in, 6'1 freshman. She's averaging 15.4. She's the leading scorer for this Butler squad. They've got to find a way to get her more touches. Only two points tonight. Schickel made her collegiate debut against Valparaiso. Just 29 points and 22 rebounds. Honestly, I think the 22 rebounds is more impressive. She got the second, three points for her. And Butler sets up the press. Morrison, wide open out of it. Butler got lucky. Butler did get lucky. They need to find shooters. Both teams have got to get back in transition quickly. Schickel swatted by Fontaine. And then Morrison, the rebound, and is fouled. Second on Butler in the corner. You know, that's not something we see very often from Natalie Fontaine going up for the block. She only has two blocks. That's her third block this season. But boy, it sure was a good one, and timely at that. Now she'll inbound it. And again, the Butler press sets up. Cardinals winging the ball around, and Langlois picks it off. Inside Schickel, backdoor Obert. That's good offense from Butler. The 1-2-1-1 one, one, one leading to a steal and a layup. Textbook defense by Butler. Cardinals break the press this time though, but Bennett missed point blank. Well, we've seen pretty much everything that can happen against the press there. You beat it, you don't beat it, and you beat it and you miss. Obert wide open. Has that range, 38%, and Schickel is fouled on the rebound. Schickel stands at six foot one, Renee Bennett at six five, but great hustle effort by Schickel to come up with that offensive rebound, which her team needs very much right now. Ball stayed by four, midway through the third.
Ball State cruising here in the second half. 11 to four is your third quarter score. That has Ball State in front by four at this point. And Amber, you look at how Butler fell to Wright State its last time out. It was in the third quarter. 24-9, Wright State won the third quarter. Butler struggled to shoot it, struggled to defend it. That's really where things hinged and it's happening again. Butler kept changing their defenses, but it still wasn't enough to overcome the Wright State Raiders who attacked the basket and got the ball inside. Three coming out of the timeout, not there for Langlois, who's gone ice cold. And that's a Butler basketball last touched by Shelby Murder. Got to find a way to regroup and you're still in it. So it's not like anything's gotten away from you. Butler has been in situations where it's way down. Trailed UCF by 15 in the third quarter of that game and then went on a 27 to eight run in the fourth quarter. But you do have to find an answer. Especially with the way Butler shoots the three ball. This game is well within their reach. Only a two possession game at four point differential. Alexa Bailey dishing for Weaver. Batted away by Frazier and on the break. Lost it, but to Morrison. Clean ball, no whistles. That got physical down low. It did get physical. Smart job right here by Ball State to pull it out, run some clock, and try to get the ball inside. That high low is so bread and butter for Brady Sally. That's really the first time we've seen Ball State try it here today. Ball State has struggled with these forward to forward passes. The third or fourth turnover we've seen with one forward trying to pass it to the other. But like you said, they've had so much success with that high low pass in prior games this year. Butler picking up the tempo, working the ball. Weaver. Not a great shooter and cashes in. That is her first made three of the season. And maybe that's what Butler needs. Now it's a one point game. Morrison's left open. Fontaine to murder. Out of bounds off of murder. And it looks like Schickel took one to the chicklets. The long shot by Morrison caused a high rebound. All the players are in there working hard and, and Schickle, Schickle got definitely elbowed there, what appears to be in the mouth. Not too much blood, but nevertheless gonna head to the sidelines and get examined by the athletic trainer. Karen Walls is the athletic trainer for Butler there, helping Schickle off with Damon Bailey. And hopefully Schickle's okay. For the meantime, Butler now just down to six players. It looks as if we'll have a stoppage in the play just to evaluate the time on the game clock. Zachary Klein, Carol Comancia, Erica Herman Camerata, our officiating crew today. The latter two at the scorer's table. You know, during that previous possession, we didn't get a, a chance to highlight it, but right before Schickel was um, contacted in the mouth, Murder missed an offensive rebound. Now, Ball State has done a great job of dominating these offensive rebounds. They're continuing to attack, but when Murder gets that offensive rebound, she's got to go up, and that is an easy score opportunity. If this game comes down to the wire, and if this game goes nip and tuck into the fourth quarter, we will come back and remember that miss offensive rebound by Shelby Murder. But again, with the way her teammates are scoring, Fontaine with 14, Morrison with 10, hopefully for Ball State's case, the game does not come down that close and we don't remember that possession. They're reviewing the contact there from what it looks like, because you could see Carol Comancia kind of make the hand to face motion, the hand to mouth motion. So I don't know if they were looking whether or not there was a flagrant that gets addressed or an elbow got thrown. It appears like everything's in the clear. 
player safety always in mind. Anytime there's contact above the shoulders, the officials want to do their due diligence and make sure that all is well and it was clean play. Ball State's lead still won. Morrison overplayed Langloy, and she has just lost the touch right now. Three for three to start off. Three for 11 now. She's a great shooter, and those are great looks. And like you said, nothing more, nothing less than she's just lost the touch. They're just not falling. Over four in the second half for Langloy. Grande trying to feed Bennett. Fontaine missing the 18-footer. That's the one thing you'd like to see Fontaine add to the game is from about 15 out consistency. She started the game with that short corner jump shot, nailing it down. Bennett hit a short jumper as well, but both of their post players for Ball State need to make sure that that range becomes bread and butter for them. Another try, and Langloy connects. Shooter's Creed, Amber Stocks, make till you miss and miss till you make. Morrison. No whistle, Ball State still has possession. Give Langlois credit though, confidence not an issue. Fonte, Bennett, lost it, and it'll stay Ball State with a fresh 30. Ball State seems to be lucky to retain possession of that ball right there with two rebounders. And we see Langlois on the three. She is not lacking in confidence, and she shouldn't because her statistics don't lie. She's a proven shooter time and time again. Again, has scored 32 points in a single game for her career. Has taken now 10 threes in a game four times this season for Butler, half of their games, today included. Hit nine against Georgetown last year, a program record. And has Butler back in front by two. Now we've got a whistle on the floor. And an arm bar on the Bulldogs, Michelle Weaver. Butler's in a zone. Ball State is smart to continue to attack and not just hope for jumpers to be made against this zone. Attack the zone. There are definitive holes in the Butler defense. Each team now with three fouls. Bonus is at five with 90 seconds to go third quarter. Trying to get it inside. They go the hard way. And it's stolen. Another high-low misconversion, if you will, by Ball State. They've got to find a way to connect on those high-low passes. Butler has regained the lead once held by Ball State. Eight points. That's washed away. Langloy on the drive. Wide open three. Weaver had just hit her first of the season earlier. That's going to stay with Butler. Brittany Ward, in the meantime, is slow to get up. These long shots are creating some high rebounds, and there's a lot of time with the ball hanging in the air for these players to have a lot of contact with each other. With that contact, the attempts of boxing out, coupled with the attempt of offensive rebounding, players are going to hit the floor and hit the floor hard as we see Brittany Ward going down and trying to regain her second wind. Got to play Brady Sally charades right now at this point as well. Ball State's head coach was frustrated that the ball was awarded to Butler. And still kowtowing with Zachary Klein from half the court away. You can look at Morrison and Audrey Spencer on the bench. Brady Sally, who has uh, been known for his entertainment on Ball State sidelines in his time here. Lobbed to Obert on the inbounds, just flicked it up. And Monaco the rebound for Ball State. Inside a minute to go in the third, and the pressure's got Grande trapped and threw it away. Whistle away from it all, and they got Franny Frazier. You know, interesting that Butler decides to come out and blitz trap off of a missed shot. That wasn't a dead ball situation, but Butler came out and got the blitz trap 
They send their defenders up, shoot the gap, and what a great steal and body control to keep that ball inbounds. That was Frazier who mugged Alexa Bailey after she threw the ball. Her second of the quarter. Ball State's fourth. Final 30 seconds here in the third. Langloy again. She has found the stroke once more. Langloy has 17 for the Butler Bulldogs. Lead back to five. Monaco, it got there. And it's blocked. Ball stayed flying, helter skelter. Key possession right now for Ball State. They've got 13.8 seconds. They need to make sure they take the last shot of the quarter. Bree Simon in as the inbounder for Ball State. Her first action at the point guard spot. Has it on the wing. This is Bennett in traffic. And Butler the rebound. Two seconds to get something in the air. It's Langloy. And Butler has the lead by five after three. Butler has led after every quarter, although Ball State picked up the tempo in the third. Fourth quarter coming up. Claire Langloy cooled off over the middle of the game, but really found her stroke again at the end of the third quarter. She is still shooting, finding the open gap, and her teammates continue to find her. Now first in the Big East Conference in three-pointers made. 22 of them on the season. She has passed her teammate Sydney Buck, who led the Big East at 20 before the start of the day. Buck has hit two, actually, it's another tied. 22 each. Somewhere the math works out there. Butler leads by five with the basketball. Final 10 minutes here in Muncie. Butler looking for seven straight over the Cardinals. Brittany Ward took the first shot of the third and of the fourth. Missed them both. And ball stayed in possession. Bree Simon remains the point guard here for Brady Sally's bunch. 
Gets the basketball from Fontaine. Did not play until the very end of the third quarter, but she holds the reins here to start the fourth. Monaco. She can dial it up from deep. Mariah Monaco. That's her first. With Monaco, Morrison, and Fontaine on the court, Bree Simon and Renee Bennett don't have a huge scoring responsibility. I like the fact that Monaco found her shot and was not shy about shooting it the first time. You can have one heck of a three-point shooting contest with people just plucked off of these teams. Forget anybody else that's out there. I mean, I'm sure there's good ones, but why look elsewhere? Two to shoot. Obert missed it. You got Morrison, who might be the Mid-American Conference's best three-point shooter when it's all said and done, male or female. She's on pace to near that record. You got Monaco. You got Langlois. You got Buck. Here's Morrison. Doesn't get the bounce. Put back. And Renee Bennett to the line for two. Simon did a good job of drawing the defender Obert in, and that is what allowed Morrison to get that open look for a three. And then again, the emphasis on the cleanup job of Renee Bennett. Offensive rebounding, so key for Ball State this game. Langloy picked up the foul. That's her second. And the first of the fourth quarter on Butler. So now Ball State. The second best free throw shooting team in the country will go to the line. Cardinals today are four of four. Came in at 79%. Ball State was an atrocious 13 of 19 on Thursday. So they, they shot it in the foot. But this is a team that you just don't want to mess with at the free throw line. Fontaine was perfect until she missed one on Thursday. Monaco still is perfect. Morrison was fantastic last year as again this year. It's, they're hidden points. They're easy points. That's why they're free. Easy points. And, and that said, it's surprising that Ball State has only gotten to the free throw line four times this game. They're attacking the basket, which is what they need to do. But again, sixth in the country, very impressive. That just shows the, the mental focus, the toughness, and then the commitment to working on their free throws and maintaining their shooting form. They're adjusting the clock. Put 831 up there. And Bennett now to the line for two. Even the bigs hit the free throws. Six foot five and a center. Does her best guard, pick a guard, instead of your best DeAndre Jordan. Two for two, Renee Bennett. Interesting on the made free throw that Ball State chooses not to pick up and pressure full court, which they did semi-effectively in the first half of this game. We're all tied up again now here at 37. Buck trying to get open. Cardinals run her off the line really nicely. Ward off a foot. Monaco looking for trailing horses and the block. The cavalry did not arrive and Obert just stuck with her. You know, that's a great decision by Monaco to drive and attack the basket, but Obert again with the block. Such a solid defender she is. She's back, her feet are moving. She maintains contact and space, clean block. We got a jump ball called on the inbounds. Fontaine and Obert got all knotted. Possession stays with Ball State. Again, this from Obert who did not play basketball for four years. Went to Butler to play volleyball, and at the end of volleyball, walked into Kurt Godlewski's office and said, how about I give this a try? Fontaine, ball slipped out, and it's a Butler ball. Ball, ball State has gotten mixed up on their matchups the last couple of possessions. We'll see if they can communicate clearly and stay on each defensive assignment. There's Weaver into a double team and lost the ball. Morrison, foul. Buck got her. That's the third on Butler. And we talked about free throws. Ball State now two away from the bonus with seven and a half minutes to go in the game. Great block there by Fontaine. 
three for Monaco off the mark. That's Ward the rebound for Butler. Her fourth. Ball State is dominating the rebounding battle. Cardinals are plus 11. Too much space, but Langlois steps in. And Bree Simon just sacrificed herself for a foul. Huge defensive possession and so smart by Simon, the great on-ball defender. She's in help side. She's there. She sees the offense coming. She maintains her position. Great charge. Third on Langlois. Morrison in transition. Bennett. Stick it back. And a foul. That might be the play of the game for Ball State when they needed it most. Off of a great shot attempt by Morrison, Bennett comes up with a strong rebound. And that one didn't just fall into her lap, Joel. She had to work for that offensive rebound. Missed the extra, but Ball State has reclaimed the lead. 39-37. These are two pretty good offenses. It's been a defensive game. And a whistle on Ball State. It's a hand check. First on the Cardinals here in the fourth quarter. They got Monaco for her second. The officials have consistently been calling those hand checks throughout the game. Scoop Ward got it. And a foul there too. Tied again. Third on Bennett. Butler once again going right at Bennett with Ward off of the dribble. She converts. Brittany Ward has now scored. She started 0 for 7 from the floor. Big East preseason freshman of the year. A couple of double doubles this year. Held quiet till now. And Fontaine kept her out. Butler's lead is one. Ward got poked in the face. There's no whistle. Renee Bennett just poked her. It was inadvertent. And then they'll get Simon for the block. So they get Ball State for the foul, but I don't know how that happened right in front of Zachary Klein. There's a lot of contact on this court right now. This game is so close. And again, the in-state rivalry. The rivalry not only starts during the game, but it goes on all year with recruiting and pickup games. A lot of these players have competed against each other in high school. No shot, a walk on Ward. Said to Kirk Godlewski before the game today, hey, is there enough room for all these teams to be good? You're all competing for the same recruits, the same fans, the same everything. Is there enough basketball in this state for so many programs to succeed? And the answer is yes and no. To an extent, sure. And Fontaine called for the charge. Okay, so Coach Sully has taken his jacket off on that call. Interesting. So we know it's real. <laughs> we know it's real as Fontaine was just pivoting away from the pressure. The defense looks like she just lost her balance. There's going to be contact. This is going to be a tight, close game. The tie got loosened a little bit too there. Butler by one. Back into Ward. Ran to the baseline, and she met it. So a turnover for Butler. That is the 13th. I'll turn that question to you, Amber. How do these teams compete in state? How do you win the recruiting battles so that everybody can coexist or can they? Well, in any other state, that would be a problem. But this is the Midwest, this is Indiana. And when you look at the breadbasket of Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, the talented basketball players, there are enough players, enough fans, enough love of the game for everybody. Here's Monaco, an Ohio player, Morrison out of Indiana. We've got three Ohio-Indiana kids on the floor for Ball State. 
and two internationals as Fontaine heads to the line. Butler has all Indiana kids save for three, so seven of their ten are Indiana recruits. Fontaine was the first recruit for Brady Sally out of Stockholm, Sweden. We're tied on the free throw. Now on the make, again, Ball State puts themselves in position. They could pick up, they could change their defenses. Are they going to go zone? Are they going to go man? How will they throw Butler out of their flow and take some of the wind out of Butler's sails? 16 now for Fontaine at the free throw line. And Ball State back in front by one. Bailey's not a shooter. You see Grande step off her. Langloy gonna drive it. Turns into a pseudo pass. Ward cannot finish. Ball State trying to make it a two possession game. Off the heel, Jill Morrison. You know, for any other player, that would be a questionable shot. But that is Jill Morrison, as you said, competing right now to be the best three-point shooter in the Mid-American Conference. Buck, one of the best in the Big East. Miss for miss there. Joe Morrison, 13th in the country in three-pointers made per game. Better than three. Three and a third every time out. Grande forces it inside. And Fontaine! Put her at the line! Take a timeout. Ball State looking to make it a two possession game at the charity stripe when we come back. If you want to recycle. So if you want to recycle. If you want to recycle. Okay. So he used the other side. Is that true? Yeah. Butler has led at the end of every quarter here, but Ball State applying the pressure in the fourth. Cardinals outscoring the Bulldogs 11 to three here in the first about six minutes of the fourth quarter. Brittany Ward has all three points for Butler. Meanwhile, Natalie Fontaine has taken over here in winning time for the Cardinals. 
Ball State is making this run based on their rebounding. Their rebounding is what is keeping them in the game and what is giving them the four-point edge right now against Butler. Fontaine with the free throw, 17 points. Averaging 19.8 coming in, 32nd best in the country. And exactly what she needs to average to become Ball State's all-time leading scorer. Same old, same old for the senior from Sweden. Here's Langloy and a block. That'll put her at the line. That's the fifth on Ball State. It's Fontaine and the third on her. Butler's doing a great job of trying to get Langloy the ball. They're running her off of stagger screens, down screens, flare screens, and Mariah Monaco is having to chase her all around the court. Wasn't able to quite keep up with her that possession, which is why Fontaine needed to step across and help side. Didn't quite step off over fast enough and picked up the foul. First free throws for Langloy are both good. 19 for her. Her season high is 21. She got that against Wright State last time out. Ball State's lead is two and back to the press here, which has worked well. Grande splits it. Monaco. Got her own shot and a putback. The offensive rebounding again by Ball State attacking the boards. Monaco with the great second effort to secure that rebound. Now she's got the assignment of shutting down Langloy. Langloy drives by her but missed. Over. Had it and lost it. Cardinals two on one. Spin for Monaco. Nine points for the sophomore. She was quiet, but is stepping up big when her team needs it the most. Time out, Kurt Godlewski. Butler talking it over, down six. We see Monaco here in transition. A pull-up shot, which for her is a great shot, but she follows it up with something even better, an offensive rebound putback. And again, in transition, her teammate Joe Morrison pushing the tempo. She's there, gathers, fakes and sh shakes and fake, fakes and shake. I can't even get my words right. It, all it was all of the above. Nevertheless, it ends with an easy basket right over the front of the rim. Shake and bake, I think is where we were going there. Shake and bake, that is exactly where I was going. But Mariah Monaco took us there. You wanna be Ricky or Cal? Ricky. Okay, that means I gotta be Cal. <laughs> Ball State in front. Butler trying to regroup with three to go. There's Langloy. Monaco giving her too much room. Way too much room. Blair Langloy, season best, 22 points. Did it early and is doing it late. Morrison's open. For three short, Monaco sent it out of bounds. Good, I guess, pseudo late box out there by Alexa Bailey. Impeded the progress of Monaco to the loose ball. Morrison has tried to respond to every Langloy three with a three of her own. Now, I like her competitiveness, <laughs> but that might not be the best strategy for Ball State. Buck this time. Short, Morrison the board. Monaco with the answer. <laughs> Mariah Monaco. We're trading threes, and Ball State is up by six. That is a big time shot. Now, turn around and get the defensive stop. Monaco, as great as she's playing on offense right now, she's got to shut down Langloy on defense. Just Ball State's fourth three. Cardinals 17% from behind the arc, but a critical one. And Brittany Ward, the freshman, comes up big. Five points all in the fourth quarter. Brittany Ward, she is again the preseason freshman of the year for the Big East, a talented scorer. Butler has a great offensive threat in her on inside and Langloy outside. The movement is just getting looks around the arc here for Ball State. Grande. 
Even Carmen Grande is getting in on it. 11% from three. Her first points of the game. Great screen assist by Natalie Fontaine. Another Langloy. Timeout, Butler. Two possession game with a minute nine to play. The three point shooting by itself, we could fill up an entire highlight reel just by the three point shooting of both of these teams. Here off of the ball screen, it's hard enough for Grande to hit a three, but this one off of the dribble, the ball screen, the celebration, and then coming back on the other end, same thing. A tunnel ball screen and Langloy with the pull up three off the dribble. There have been 52 three-pointers attempted in this ball game. Only 15 have gone in. But there is zero lack of confidence putting the ball up. And really, you've got two teams that do it so well. So you're going to get that. But 52 is, I imagine, going to be on the extreme end at the end of the season when you take a look back at the statistics. It is on the extreme end, but what can you say this is indiana and <laughs> shooters come from the great state of indiana all the great high school coaches club coaches players come from here they know how to shoot the ball 43 percent of the shots in this game threes just about every other shot now, with a minute and nine seconds left, you would think that the strategy of both teams is to, again, attack the basket and try to get to the free throw line. But, Joel, the players are feeling it. And if they're in the three-point zone, they're going to shoot it. Well, the press sets up again for Butler. All five Bulldogs in the backcourt, and Ball State will burn a timeout. Brady Sally has one left. Butler is out of timeouts. One more note about the three-point shooting here, too, Amber. Ball shit date has not shot it well, 5 of 24, but 19 offensive rebounds. So it's almost kind of worked like an, an assist at times because they've gotten the boards and the putbacks. Take a look at what we're dealing with here. We've mentioned it a few times. Butler has won the last six. Ball State last one with one heck of a score back in 2006. Current Ball State assistant Audrey Spencer, then Audrey McDonald had eight in that game early in her career. Cardinals have not won here since 2001. Again, the press is on for Butler. It's into Grande, and it will stay with Ball State tipped out of bounds. Now this is key because now that the ball's been tipped out of bounds, it is a dead spot ball for Ball State to inbound. And they do get in and actually fairly easily. Four-point game. Certainly don't have to foul. Butler playing for the steal. Shot clock nearing 10. It's tipped. Butler's got it. You do not have to hurry. Now Butler can take their time. Layloy wanted a three. Underneath, Obert blocked from behind by Monaco. And we've got a foul. Butler had a chance. Wow. Mariah Monaco with the outstanding sprint back and the block from behind. This fourth quarter has been phenomenal for her, not only offensively, but defensively as well. She's getting things done, rebounding, blocking shots, has the tough assignment of guarding Langloy. Credit her for her effort on both ends of the court. They called the foul on Michelle Weaver intentional. So Grande will shoot here without anybody on the line. It's interesting. I was about to say you don't need a three on that last possession for Butler as Langloy tried to put one up. And this goes back to the discussion of that's your bread and butter, so it's okay, but maybe you would have liked a different look. You got one anyway. But the way that things played out, maybe you could have gotten a better one in the flow of the offense. You know, right now, as you said, the bread and butter for Butler is Langloy. They were going to board, but right now, Langloy did have the hot hand. So Grande hits them both. Two possession game, and Fontaine throws it away. 
So you lose the benefit of the intentional foul there. Butler's going to take over with no time coming off. So and now with, with no Brittany Ward on the court, that leaves Buck and Langloy, the two offensive threats. And Olbert, who can shoot the three as well. And I, you don't need one, but my gut tells me they're going to take one. Langloy does. Missed it. Rebound Morrison. And they foul her. Ball State, the sixth best free throw shooting team in the country. Going to the line to seal it. You know, you mentioned Obert, Buck, and Langloy, but no Ward and no Schickle for Butler. So Ball State can do a really good job here of securing these rebounds and getting the ball out, waiting for, for Butler to foul. You know Butler is going to foul, putting great three free throw shooter Jill Morrison at the line. And of course, I just jinxed her, calling her a great free throw shooter right before her free throw attempt. You know, Schickle has only played 18 minutes today. And you kind of wonder down the stretch, you still even now don't need a three. Now you probably do. Morrison with 11 at this point. But your leading scorer as Grande steals the inbound. Got a foul, and Fontaine's going to the line. You would have thought maybe you could have gone into Schickle with a minute to go, or 40 seconds to go, trying to creep back in. That never occurred for Butler, and now barring a miracle, Ball State is going to get out of here with its first win against Butler since 2006. You know, barring a miracle, but the way that Butler shoots the ball, miracles can happen. All of these great three-point shooting threats that they've got on the court. 18 for Fontaine. Came in averaging 19. Missed her second miss of the year. And another turnover. And Morrison will ice it. Ball State is five and two. It's best start since 2006. The last time it beat Butler. Great job by Ball State working the ball, fighting until the end. Each quarter, the end of the quarter, Butler had the lead, but the quarter that mattered the most, Ball State came out with the lead at the end of the fourth quarter. Ball State five and two, Butler falls to four and four, and a big in-state win for Brady Sally's squad. Natalie Fontaine leads the way for the Cardinals. Langlois, 25 for Butler, come in defeat. Again, for Amber Stocks, our producer is Keith Huffman. My name is Joel Gadeff. 58-50 is our final for Muncie. To watch a replay of this game and other games, you can go ahead to ESPN3.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a production of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Again, 58-50, a Ball State win over Butler. We say good night for Muncie.